Happy Sabbath, everyone. Who can share the heart like Jesus? By his presence all divine, true and tender, pure and precious. Oh, how blessed to call his mind. All that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see love of Christ so freely given grace of God beyond divine mercy higher than the heaven deeper than the deeper sea all that truths my soul is Jesus he is more than life to me and the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see every need is hand supplied every good in him I see on his strength divine relying he is all in all to me all that thrills my soul is Jesus he is more than life to me and the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see by the crystal flowing river with the ransom I will sing and forever and forever praise and glorify the King all that thrills my soul is Jesus he is more than life to me and the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see all that thrills my soul is Jesus he is more than life to me and the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed lord i see and the fairest of ten thousand 
in my blessed Lord I see. Thank God for sparing our lives to see another Sabbath. Our first Sabbath in 2023. And we must be thankful Amen. always. Be thankful. We are only worthy of death. That's the truth. We have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And our punishment is death. But 2,000 plus, and I must say plus, people constantly for years been saying 2,000. I wonder does it remain at 2,000? So 2,000 plus years ago, Yahshua Mashiach, some say Jesus, Jesus Christ, died on Calvary for your sin and my sin. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now I want to explain what that means. I'm in no debate with nobody. No Rasta man, no Muslim. I'm not in any bait with anybody. The day is coming when every tongue will be stopped and all debates will be finished. And the only thing that will be said, they will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I am happy to be alive. I don't know about you, but I'm happy to be here this morning to share this Sabbath with you, it is the 7th of January, 2023. I have to remind myself, whenever you come over, remember in school, you start back school, for probably the first two weeks, you're still writing the previous year, 2023. We are here. I know, I want to make it clear that we are having an issue, and I'm putting it out to the congregation that the truth is we need another place because we are an international church and we have been providing from October we've been here messages to our international audience but it has not been live it has been delayed even two Sabbaths behind so those who are getting the message today around the world are actually getting the message from the 24th of December and we really want to fix that quickly, but we need a place that we can live stream. So I'm putting it out there so you can help us to pray, and possibly you can also help us to look. Amen? Amen. We also need more space. I'm sure you're seeing that. But irrespective of the fact that we are delayed, there is an announcement I must make for the benefit of the international church. Uh, there was a time when we used to have on our platform the option for those around the world who would donate to the cause of God, um, PayPal. And this was attached to a certain name, Shamar Francis. But I want to make it clear that that avenue is now closed, no longer available. And I think we have taken it off the website, but people probably would have had the information before we took it down and possibly still using it. If you have, I know of one person who has been and didn't know, if you have, just note that that channel has been closed and we no longer have that option. Please contact me if you are in issues, 876-452-0277. The name Shamar Francis is no longer affiliated, connected or attached to the FTB ministry following the Blueprint ministry. Those who will get that delayed, but nonetheless, I have to send out that public information. All right, without any 
further delay. I have taken a new look, but I'm aiming for a new heart. How about that? Amen. Character development for 2023. That's what we are aiming for. Character development 2023. I want us to get into the attitude of prayer as we prepare to open and go into the Holy Word. I want to say a pleasant welcome to those who have joined us today for the first time. Visitors, I welcome you to this ministry, this church. Now let us pray. Make sure the children are in order, your phones are off, and we are going to pray to begin. Let us pray. All that thrill my soul is Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come today. This day you have spared our lives. The 7th of January in the year for Lord 2023. It has been a bloody start for Jamaica. From murder to murder suicide to suicide and the bloodshed continues but in the midst of all that darkness you have kept us safe while we sleep you kept us safe father just this week you send a quick angel to steer me out of a major car accident it must have been an angel that held those brakes I praise your name. I'm here today in one piece, and I must give praise and honor and glory unto you, King of all kings. Now, Father, as we have gathered here today to worship you, to hear your spoken word, to be reminded why we are here, to be reminded what's about to come and to stay focused, we pray that you will keep us focused for these few minutes, hours as we hear a word from you. Now, Lord, I present myself before the people, and I'm asking your holy, powerful hands to take your robe of righteousness of your son and cover me. Clear my record, Lord. May this channel be free, so that from earth to heaven the connection may be sure. Have thine own way, as I use my hands to handle your holy word. Father, inspire my mind with the divinity of electricity of divinity, that I may speak your words and not mine. Now we present ourselves in this place. Thy glory may fill this place, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let us start with the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 2, Isaiah, the second chapter. I want to start at verse 10 to 12 and then verse 20 to 22. So Isaiah chapter 2, we're going to start at verse 10 to 12 and then 20 to 22. Verse 10 says, enter into the, the rock. Do you see it? Enter into the rock. Are you there? Page still turning. Let's go. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. Verse 11. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Verse 12. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud. Did you hear that? And lofty. Did you hear that, church? And upon everyone that is what? Lifted up. And upon all. Sorry. And he shall be brought what? Low. Let's go to verse 20. It says, in that day. 
What it says? In that day, a man shall cast his idols of what? Silver and his idols of what? Gold, which they made, huh, each one for himself to what? Worship. To the moles and to the what? The bats. They shall cast them away, the silver and the gold. Verse 21. To go into the clefts of the rock and into the tops of the ragged rocks. For what? For what? For fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. And it says, when he ariseth to do what? Shake terribly the earth this is the word of god verse 22 cc from man whose breath is in his what huh. nostril for wherein is he to be accounted of powerful verses let's go to we're, we will stay in isaiah let's go to ver, chapter 30 all right let's go to chapter 30 we're still in isaiah let's read verses 29 to 30. Isaiah 30 verses 29 to 30. The Bible says, ye shall have a, a song. Ye shall have a, a song as in the night when a what? Holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord to the mighty one of Israel. Verse 30 says, And the Lord shall cause his what? Glorious voice to be heard and shall shew the lightning down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of a devouring fire with scattering and tempest and hailstone. Psalms. Giving you the foundation as I Going to the word, the message today. Psalms 46. Psalms 46. Verses 1 to 3. God is our refuge and strength. Are a very present help in trouble. Verse 2. Therefore will not we fear Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Verse 3. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. God's going to protect. Let's go to Malachi. All right. New Testament now. No, we're still in the old. It's the final book of the old. All right. Malachi. Minor prophet. Before Matthew, Malachi, and we're going to chapter 3. All right, so Malachi chapter 3, and we read verses 13 to 18. Malachi 3, verses 13 to 18. The Bible says, Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, What have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? God is having a conversation. Verse 15, and now we call the proud happy. Hmm. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Hmm. Verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And the book of what? Remembrance, church, was written before him for them that did what? Feared the Lord, and that what? Thought upon his name. Verse 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them, God says, as a man speareth his own son that serveth him. Verse 18. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the 
wicked between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Wanna wanna start our message. Our message today is on the brink of annihilation, a sudden change comes. Apparent loss turns to victory. But where are you then? Empty pockets, closed mouths. Let's do it again. On the brink of annihilation, a sudden change comes. Apparent loss turns to victory. But where are you then? Empty pockets, closed mouths. Empty pockets, closed mouths. We have studied the word of God, or at least you should, to understand the times in which we live, what has happened in the past, and to now know what's about to come in the future. We should not be like those in the world who have some bright and brilliant idea and that God's going to enlarge our territory and we can look for greater prosperity and more money and all of these vain thoughts. I want to make it very clear to you. God in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, God made a perfect world. Are you there with me? God gave some commands. But if we go to Revelation chapter 12, we will see that even before God made our earth, as he made many other worlds without sin, there was war in heaven. And Michael the angel fought against Lucifer, right? Whose name meant son of the morning. And there are many people who say they are Luciferians and they worship Satan. But they don't want to call him Satan. They want to call him Lucifer. And many people ascribe negative to the name Lucifer. But it's actually a good name with a good meaning. It means a son of the morning. When he fell, the Bible never called him Lucifer anymore. It called him Satan. It called him the deceiver. Are you there with me? The dragon. But there was war in heaven. And that war, the Bible says, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil hath come down. And so in Genesis chapter 3, we see where man fell into sin. And from Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, a prophecy was stated. God said that the, the, the serpent, which is the medium through which Satan used. The serp and there are a lot of people. You know what's sad about Jamaica? There are people who would not take up the Bible and read and educate themselves. But they would want to come to a religious person to have a discussion about foolishness. To talk about man having sex with angels. Please shut up. Shut up because if you don't read the scripture... Then don't come to me with hearsay and foolishness. Just be quiet. Be quiet. The first thing you must do to not let yourself look stupid is to read. Reading make it the man. Are you there with me? And the most, uh, the greatest authority on the word of God is the word of God. The greatest authority on what was written and what happened as it relates to the holy account is the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so I am in no foolish debate and discussion with any foolish person who wants to come with this theory and this idea why giants were here and angels had sex with men. All of that is hogwash. Foolishness. Satan had, the serpent had sex with the woman. Hogwash. Foolishness. Are you there with me? Satan used the serpent as a medium to tempt. Are you there? And it just happens that the plural of medium is media. And Satan is still using the media as a medium to distract and to disturb and to tempt. And, and I want to make it very clear to you. The serpent that we are seeing today is not as God made it. The first thing the scripture says in Genesis after the fall in Genesis chapter 3 is that God cursed. The serpent. Satan doesn't use ugly. So when you see that serpent today and, you, mm, and your skin crawl, that's a cursed serpent. Satan doesn't use ugly. 
He used the prettiest cars to tempt, the most handsome man to tempt the woman, and the so-called pretty ladies to tempt the man. That's what Satan does. He tempts the powerful. He possesses the powerful. That's how he always works. He possessed the most gifted. That's how he works. So the serpent, as you see today, was not the medium that Satan used in the Garden of Eden. That's a cursed serpent. Are you there with me? First of all, the original serpent as God made it could fly. The original serpent as God made it could walk, had feet. It was the most beautiful creature that God had made. What you're seeing today is after Satan possessed it. And, and I'm trying to send a message to you. Mm -hmm. When Satan possess you, you will become ugly. Mm -hmm. You see what Satan does? He tries to laugh in the face of God. Mm -hmm. He has possessed God's creature. And people bore where they're not supposed to bore. And bore where there's already a hole. Are you there with me? They bleach and, and, and pale themselves out. And take away their melanin that protects them from the sun. This is how Satan works. It's a war. When Satan possesses you, you become uglier. Or ugly. That's a fact. People tattooing up themselves all about. Listen to me. We are in a warfare. God is trying to get us back before it is too late. And I've come here to tell you today that it's almost too late. We are on the brink of annihilation. Who is the we? Those that serve God. All the texts I've read today is showing you a warfare. Are you there with me? God has a contention with the nations of the earth. Mm -hmm. And when you read the last thing that I read in Malachi chapter 3, you'll see that people are lifting up the ungodly. Mm -hmm. And looking at, at, with scorn on those who serve and worship God. And there's a tradition in Jamaica where on the last day of the year, church full. And on the first day of the year, church full. And that's it. We better leave these foolish in 2022. Because God will not be mocked. I will read something for you today. Coming from Great Controversy. If you have not that book, we can give you one. It says... When the protection, listen to this, of human laws shall be withdrawn from those who honor the law of God, there will be in different lands a simultaneous movement for their destruction. What you say is going to happen, preacher? I said the governments of this world. Jamaica, you hear what it said? In simultaneous, in different lands, in USA, the Caribbean, in Europe, the governments are going to remove the laws that they write that protects people from God's people. And there is going to be a move, an in simultaneous movement all across the world for their destruction, or shall I use another word, for their annihilation, for their removal, as they will be seen as the scorn on this earth. We live in a day today where uh, the truth has become unpopular, mm -hmm. where the word of God has become outdated, where the younger generation has nothing to do with God, those who are in their early 20s and teens, those generation, mm -mm. and I don't even want to talk about those who are young babies to come up. God will not allow it to happen. We are living amongst people who at the very snap of the finger, or when God removes his, it, his, 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 his angels that are holding the winds of strife, these people will be filled with demons. Because nine out of ten people, mostly in Jamaica, nowadays have nothing to do with God. They have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And everybody wants to do what they want to do. 
And when you open your mouth and begin to talk, you become the enemy. And so, that because of that, we have a lot of people today who decide that I don't want no trouble, so I'm going to be quiet. But when you're silent, then God's going to be silent for you. They are quiet on homosexuality. They are quiet on piercings. Quiet on bleaching. Quiet on theft. Quiet on scamming. And everybody is either doing it or they're quiet. Have you ever heard the statement, evil continues when good men are what? Silent. Right now, laws are being set in place that governments think, believe, are going to be for the betterment of humanity when it will be for the worse. One of the worst laws that has been passed, which goes against God's people, is by a black man that you all like to say, oh, a black man is now in the White House. You are fooled by color. God deals with the heart. Don't care what color covers that. White, Hispanic, black. I don't care about color. I care about character. That's what God deals with. Character. Are you there? And that man, President Obama, pass and talk about love. Whom the Lord loved, he rebuked, the Bible says, and chastened. Mm? We have a confused a mixed up, a sad idea of what is love. How many men in Jamaica we have seen who said, love the woman, he kills her and go and hang himself. Love? Possession. Evil. Darkness seen as light and light as darkness. One of the worst things to be Validated by presidents and governments and leaders of countries, homosexuality. You didn't know? Why? It is anti-God. When God made Adam and Eve, homosexuality is against that. You didn't know? For they to procreate. Are you there with me? And two men cannot and two women cannot. Two men cannot, I say, and two women cannot. This is a crime against heaven. So I'm using that as an example to let you understand that the protection of human laws. And, and now we're in a place where you don't even have your rights anymore. Because if you are asked publicly and you state your right that you do not accept it, then you are now guilty of hate crime. Do you see that? So let me read it again. When the protection of human laws shall be withdrawn from those who honor the law of God, there will be in different lands a simultaneous movement for their destruction. This is the time in which we are going. This has nothing to do with black and white. This has nothing to do with cousins and aunties. This has nothing to do with fathers and sons and mothers and daughters and husbands and wives. Listen to me. According to Matthew chapter 6, hear what God says and writes in Matthew chapter 10, that the gospel comes as a sword. Are you there with me? To separate mother and father. Are you there? Husbands and wives. Children, brothers and sisters. Why? Because all of a sudden when you choose to serve God, even those that you thought were close will become enemies. Yes. Not because you want it to be so. Not because you wish it to be so. But because it is made to be so. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. For the woman shall have seed and the serpent shall bruise the heel and the heel shall crush the head of the serpent. There is an enmity. And that's why I say it for the thousand time, worldly and, and church people can't mix. Uh, a woman can't be in the church and go marry a man in the world. The marriage now go work. I don't care how much the wedding looked pretty. I don't care how much prayers were said at the altar. It now go work. Because when you do things like that, you are saying to God, you said darkness and light can't mix, but may I show you say it go work. 
By the way, let me make something clear to you. The only success to marriage is debt. What do you mean? I'm confused. Uh, uh, the Bible says until debt. Well, not say Bible. The, the, at the altar they say until debt. Because that's really God's idea. But in an imperfect world, you don't always have the ideal. Because for marriage to work, it takes two. It takes what? Two. Do you know sometimes you really marry the right person, but their mind changed during the course of that marriage? They allow Satan to possess them. And no matter how another is trying, once one walks away, it cannot work because it takes two. So if you've been married for 50 years and then end up in divorce, that's a failed marriage. Don't matter how many years were behind it. Are you there with me? Because marriage really represents who? Christ and the, the church. But how many times, like Gomar and Uzziah, does the woman go to whoredom? Woman representing now church. Us, how many times we have gone to sin, we thank God for his unconditional love. But very soon, I'm telling you, laws are being drafted. Right now. Look at Jamaica. They used to say homophobic country. You can take that away now. Scrap that out. That doesn't exist anymore. Right now, homosexuals can walk freely on the road. And I'm just using this in context of, my, of what I've started to talk about. But I'm not saying it's the worst sin. God caused it an abomination. But if you lie, you're going to the same hell where the homosexuals will go. So I want to just make it clear here. Because we have a country that will um, lift up fornication. Man have enough gal in a bungle, they song say. Are you there with me? And all of us say, yeah, yeah. Oh, burn the homosexual. God went and burn the man with enough girl in a bungle too. Yes. Sin is sin. Yes. Listen to me this morning. As the time appointed in the decree, future to come, draws near what decree? What does the word decree mean? Law. As it draws near, the people will conspire to root out the hated sect. And who will be the hated sect now? Those who honor the law of God. Didn't you see what I just read in Malachi chapter 3, verses 13 to 18? God said he's going to cover his people. But God has a controversy because those who are uplifted are those who go against the word of God. And that's the world we live in. Yes. They use certain terms today, old-fashioned. When people say old-fashioned, but most time, wait till you talk about, because you're standing on the right. So right is old-fashioned. All the laws that you are seeing being drafted. For example, the anti-terrorist bill. Mm? In America, Homeland Security. Watch me now. These things are being drafted. These laws are there. And it seems to make sense now against those who will bomb a building, so forth and so on. But those same laws are going to be turned at a certain time against those who they think are the troublers of the peace. And it's all going to be tied to Sunday worship or climate law. They are coming, church. The laws, the, you, you, that's why we do not depend on the government. How many times have they failed? Time and time again. And so us as true Seventh-day Adventists, we don't vote. There are many things today that you have to use to know when we are peculiar. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9, we are peculiar. Are you there with me? We are royal priesthood. And there are simple things that you might think are not important. For example, true seven-day events, we don't wear wedding rings. Waste of time, waste of money. We eat a certain way. We dress a certain way. We talk a certain way. It's going to be a worldwide. This is going to be like a pandemic. They're going to hate. Just in John 14. What did Jesus say in John 14? If they hate me. Hmm, who is your leader? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, then they will hate you who follow me. 
What Jesus says, what came to me is going to come to you. Mm -hmm. And when they came at the trial to kill Jesus, are you there now? They said it's better one man suffer than a whole nation. And I just want to make it clear to you that righteousness is always in the few. Every time, every single time, righteousness is always in the few. If some game was playing, we couldn't be in this place. It would be too small. Listen to me, church, what I'm trying to say. It will be determined. This is what's going to happen in the future. Very clearly, very, very shortly. It will be determined to strike in one night a decisive blow. Annihilation. In one night, a decisive blow which shall utterly silence the voice of dissent and reproof. That's the problem. The voice of what? Dissent and what? Reproof. People want you to accept all sorts of foolishness. We will be the group of people in this island and uh, there will be a group of people like this across the world who will not bow, will not accept, don't care if the crowd no support. We will stand for righteousness. We will stand on the word of God. Amen. And, and we don't know who yet. Because a peaceful day is... But when the laws of government shall be withdrawn from the protection of God's people and all we have left to depend on is God and we will have to get out of the city and even out of our country home into solitary, the word is solitary places. We're going to know who are Seventh-day Adventists. I said it will be determined in one night. Simultaneous movements across the world, in America, in the Caribbean, in Europe. We have to get rid of them people here. Yeah. And them are the trouble. I talk about Sabbath and keep Saturday. Eh? And the day they were part of the most. I want to them. And them people here yeah, are the problem. At them are black the prosperity. At them no one pause as the government law says on the family day which will be Sunday and worship God. Worship which God? The sun God. Ra. The first Sunday law in 321 AD Constantine has nothing and not rooted in scripture. And then there are some people who want to say well that's why I can't bother with religion. Because it should just be love. If we worship God, we worship God. No matter if a Sunday or a Saturday or a Baptist. Or a... It matters. Yes. It matters. As long as you have the word of God. It matters. Yes. What do you mean? It no matter. You can't throw water in your car. And drive go away. Unless a hybrid. Throw water in an EV car, no? Go throw water in an electric vehicle and see what happens. There is a manual for every single thing. Amen. There is a way to walk for every single thing. Yeah. And you're going to tell me with God's holy word and with how we ought to worship him, it no matter as long as we are said, God, top next year to fool here. Stop making serpent whisper in your ears. It matters how you worship. It matters when you worship. It matters who you worship. It matters how you dress. It matters how you look. Woman, I got ba 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 after me like man, I want you. You hear the Bible says, is your beauty. Man becoming feminized. A walk. A, listen, a man must walk a certain way and look a certain way. Don't tell me it doesn't matter when the word of God says it does. Remember the seventh day Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Uh, Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 to 11. It goes further. Not even your manservant, nor the maidservant, not even the animal. Mm -hmm. 
There's no text that says, uh, 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 rend your heart and not your garment. <laughs> the text is trying to say, in those days, the, the priests, when they see abomination, they would tear their garments. And so the Bible is saying, rend your heart and not your garment. Because just tearing your garment is a physical act. But God wants us to tear our heart so he can turn the heart of stone into a heart of flesh. So fine, you're visiting church, you're coming to worship. Fine, you wear what you have. Sure, so come as you are, but don't stay as you are. You come here to change. Are you there with me? You don't come here to gossip. You don't come here to talk about people's business. You don't come here to look at how high her heels is. You come here to focus, to listen to the word, to hear what God has to say to you. Because for 2023, what God is requiring is perfection. What is he requiring? Let this mind, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And I'm telling you, if your mind get right, your tongue get right. Did you hear what I said? If your mind get right. Your tongue get right. Listen to me, church. We are warring against each other when the real war is coming. I said the laws of government are going to be withdrawn from the protection of God's people. Laws that are going to be written in the White House and in Parliament and upper um, King's House. They are going to go against God's people. Church, you know when this time comes, let me tell you where God's people are going to be. Listen what it says. It says the people of God, some in prison cell. You ever go jail yet? Don't answer. Some in prison cells. And you ask the question, then what could I make me go jail? I gave you one example a while ago. They have hate crimes. And to speak the truth that homosexuality is an abomination and is wrong, you can be guilty of a hate crime. And, and, and what's going to happen with many of these laws? They're going to make them tougher. Right? You, you see that they are now trying to push internationally for the law of ecocide. The law of what? Ecocide. What is that? Just like how oh, you have feticide, killing a fetus. Suicide, killing yourself. Side, the word, the, 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 that word side, added means to kill. So what is ecocide? Mean you're killing the environment and the planet. And so these laws are being constructed. And it's by some of these laws that some of us will be caught guilty, ridiculously, and be placed in prison soon it's going to become did you know some of you are too young some of you are too young I too young to but I read but some of you are too young <laughs> too young to understand the days in Jamaica when you had the blue laws probably we didn't call it blue laws here but it's blue laws in America. But did you know shops were not open on Sunday? Some of you old enough to remember? Yes. Things were closed down on a Sunday. You had to go out the back door of the shop for somebody to slip yourself. Because on that day, and let me tell you something about Jamaica and its law book. We don't update it. You didn't know? Jamaica law books don't get much update. And so there are laws there that are archaic. Oh, laws that are still there. So you see that law, if it was there on the books in Jamaica about Sunday and opening shops and so, believe me, it is still on the book. Just like how they're fighting the old law, buggery. Is that what the law is? Buggery law that's attached to the whole homosexual, to, 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 to take it off the books. At that time, 
And I'm not talking about 40 years in the future. Oh, no. I'm not talking about 20 years in the future. Very near, near in the future. At that time, the people of God, some in prison cells. You must understand that those who are in prison cells are going to heaven. Because if they are God's people and they have been placed in prison cells for their faith, that means they have endured the ultimate test. Because I can tell you right now, may God give us strength, all of us in this room. But if police come right now, if we draw, we go to prison just to be here on the Sabbath. You know that no phone I go run. Pray for strength. These things I tell you shall come, not because I'm a prophet, but because they are written in the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 19 verse 10, which is the spirit of prophecy. Listen to me, church. The people of God, some are going to be in prison cells. Some are going to be hidden in solitary retreats in the forest and the mountains. And then some of you say, well, I don't want a prison cell. I bet I'm in a forest. You don't get to choose, really. Still, they are pleading for divine protection. This means God's people at this time, they understand the importance of a prayer life. There are some people pray only when they are in trouble. And if you pray only when you are in trouble, then believe me, you're going to be in trouble. You didn't get that. If you only pray when you are in trouble, then believe me, you're going to be in trouble. You must pray in the storm. You must pray in the calm. You know why God's people must always be praying? Because we understand that we are constantly in a war. And even when we are going to close our eyes to sleep, we must pray that God send his retinues of angels to stand. Because while we are sleeping, the war doesn't stop. We are in a great controversy. That's what we are in church. And it's over our souls. It's over our what? Satan is playing this game for our soul. And he's reaping a harvest. And we are living in a dangerous society. I saw the news the other day. When I look right there, the taxi man dead in, in the taxi. His brains blow out. You can just be running a taxi to make a living and a man, you take up a man, his intent is to rob, and that's the end of your life. It's a dangerous society to be living in. So how can we be living in such a society without God in our life? At this time, God's people are pleading for protection while in every quarter companies of armed men listen they will be urged on by host of evil angels are preparing for the work of death have you ever seen or hear on the news in jamaica where a community catch a man never see it huh they catch a man probably kill somebody are thief and everybody take a lick off of him. Hmm? Hmm? Who run in with knife when them hold him? Bam! Who slap, who kick, who spit, who take the stone and drop it in him head and no one is charged in those cases because nobody not talk. And the question is which hit caused the death? And so those cases, nobody go to jail. It's the same thing that's going to happen on a larger scale. You didn't understand. When the people get together and in their heads, they will be possessed by demons to say, you see them people, yeah, they're my problem, you know. And them now make the blessing come on earth, you know. Because of God holy day. They must see the government said this day. Eh? You see them, they see them, you see them little cult people, eh? And at this time, let me make it clear to you, it's not going to be against quote unquote. Adventist. What do you mean? What do you mean? Right now, Seventh-day Adventism is accepted worldwide. Huh? Uh, but, but, but when we look at what Seventh-day Adventism as a conference has become, we cannot accept it. Let me do that again. Let me do it again. Seventh-day Adventism as a conference, a worldwide organization, denomination, has been accepted. 
But when we look at what Seventh-day Adventism has become, we cannot accept it. Because it has become everything it should not. In plays, in witchcraft, supporting abomination. Right now, the last pope that died, probably we have representatives who go to the funeral. Let me tell you something. So you see those like us who decide that we will stand for God, though the heavens fall, even if they strike our names off the conference register book, we are going to become all across this world the hated sect. The cult people, the people where Afinil when them are pray, the people where them skirt reach them uncle. That's how they're gonna start classing us. You didn't know? The people where eat grass. That's how they're gonna start classing us when they wanna say they are cult. And good things are going to become bad. They're gonna say the people where all them women them here natural. The people with the man, them no go barber shop, them bush up, them beard up. That's what they're going to start to do and pick at these little things. You know what happened in Germany? World War II. You know what happened? You know what they started to do? They started with the media. And Satan used the media as a medium. Mm -hmm. And they started to print things in the newspaper and every little chance they got to say something negative about the Jews. Mm -hmm. And so by the time the war was about to start, all the people through Germany who were not Jews had a great hatred for the Jews. And so what became sickening to the world? When we saw the Holocaust, to the people there and every other people who were not Jews, they saw it as right. That's how you indoctrinate. Are you there with me? And Satan is going to do it again, but this time not in a local, this time not in one country, but it's going to be worldwide. And get out of the habit to say what the pastor saying can't happen. You better get out of that habit because many of us say it can't happen until it happened but because we were saying it can't happen then when it happened we were not prepared for it I never see a set of people so fool fool that when C119 come I say I never see a set of people so fool fool until C119 come the last pandemic it's like you could have whole up people with a sneeze. It is stupidity. It is foolishness. And that's how you know you can control the masses. Because when they fear to die, when you have lost the fear of death, you are the most dangerous human being on earth. Let me say that again. When you have lost the fear of death, you become the most dangerous human being on earth. Are you there with me? When those men go up in that plane and strap on, how are you going to stop men like those? In Jamaica, the men who are going around and killing people, whenever their death comes, they cry. Enough of them cry like baby. They don't want death. But when you have lost the fear of death, you become the most dangerous human being. And that's what God wants us to do, to lose that fear of death for him, for him. Those who are preserving their life, for every action, they will lose it. But those that lose it, this is scripture now, their life for my sake, they shall gain it in eternity. Amen. Church, God's people at this time, which are going to be few, which are going to be little bit, in comparison, in reference to the population of the world. Mm-hmm. They're going to be few. God's people at this time, some are going to be in prison cells. Some are going to be in solitary retreats in forests and mountains. They are going to be pleading for divine protection. While in every quarter, there will be companies of armed men possessed with demons on the move for the work of death to annihilate, to get rid of. It is now in the hour of utmost extremity. That the God of Israel, there is something about God's character 
that when you're down to nothing, God shows up. He is an on time man. Nobody else can do it like him because he controls time. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows when you have your last tread of hope because he is God. Amen. Just when in the hour of utmost extremity, yes, a sudden change is going to come. Apparent loss is going to be turned to victory. Yes, listen, in the very last moment, God of Israel. You know what the word Israel means? To overcome. So God's people are Israelites. You want to read Romans chapter 9? What does it say, Pastor? In Romans chapter 9, in the interest of time, I tell you, but you can read it when you get the time. God speaks about who are true Israelites. He says who are really Jews. It's not those who are do the circumcision of the flesh, of the foreskin, of the penis, but those who are, are circumcised by the heart. These are true Israelites. And so God accepts us now, not just by the fact that we are literal, physical Jews but we are spiritual Jews we are spiritual Israelites we have overcome Amen. Romans chapter 9 church we are told the Bible says and we read it earlier and I'll read it again Isaiah 30 verse 29 and 30 you remember we read that it says ye shall have a song huh? a song as in the night when I what Isaiah chapter 29, 30, sorry, verse 29, 30. When a holy solemnity, Isaiah 30, when a holy solemnity is kept and a gladness of heart as when one goeth to come into the mountain of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel, and the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the lightning down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flames of a devouring fire, with scattering and tempest and hail stone God is going to stand up for his people we don't need license firearm we don't need to sharpen cutlass unless you're going to chop cane and bush we don't need to defend ourselves God is going to defend at this time in earth's history his people God has had enough he has sat down on the throne and has watched out the great controversy but now it's time he has seen the perfection of his character in his people fully totally absolutely they have chosen against all odds their earthly support has been cut off family and friends are gone they have lost their job they have nothing to eat they are hungry they are tired they are wear worn but they are still holding on by the last tread of hope for God died for them and they have decided we will die for him and that's enough for God to get up that's enough for God to stand that's enough for God to say Michael God is going to call out his best at this time he is not even going to call Gabriel, but he will call Michael. Michael, who when he's riding down, he will carry the cosmos behind him. Michael, who will affect the position of stars, the stratosphere and the atmosphere. God will have enough at this time. And this is what encourages me. This is what keeps me to hold on. Because it will not be easy when earthly support is cut off. It will not be easy when the laws of the government will be against God's righteous people. It will not be easy when every indicator and every voice is saying you're going the wrong way. You are extreme. You are a cult. You are a sect. You are not love. You're the problem of society. It will not be easy. But there will be for those who have a relationship. And at this time now, there will be a separation between the sheep and the goat. There will be a separation between those who just sung songs versus those who have an experience in their songs. There will be a separation between those who just preach versus those who live what they preach. There will be a separation.
separation between those who just dress up and come to church versus those who dress in the character of Jesus at this time there will be a separation and so I don't worry about those who play church I don't worry about those who just make up numbers because on this day the line will be drawn in the proverbial sands of time on this day the sheep will be separated from the goats listen to me church it is at midnight and I don't mean midnight when the clock strikes midnight the term midnight is used to also mean and represent in scripture the darkest hour in an experience the most dreadful time by an experience it is at midnight it is at the darkest hour it is at the extreme impossibility it is at this hour that God will manifest his power for the deliverance of his people I say a sudden change is going to come an apparent loss is going to be turned to victory church the sun is going to appear shining in its strength signs and wonders are going to follow in quick succession the wicked is going to look with abject terror and amazement upon the scene while the righteous mm -hmm, behold with solemn joy the tokens of their deliverance we have waited isaiah chapter 26 we have waited for our god what a day it's going to be don't make no sense you come so far and give up don't make no sense you come so far and lose out over a plate of food and lose out over sexual immorality it doesn't make sense you come so far it was better you were never born than to have known righteousness and what God has in store for you and turn your back on it for some cheap temptation that Satan lays at your feet don't make sense to turn back now church we're almost there we're almost there for our deliverance. Everything in nature is going to turn out of its course. They're talking about climate change. They ain't seen climate change yet. <laughs> they ain't seen streams dry up and waterfalls go back up. They ain't seen climate change yet. Mm -hmm. They're talking about climate change. They ain't seen dark clouds clash against each other, separated by a bold strike of lightning. They ain't seen climate change yet. They're talking about climate change. They're trying to preserve the planet through climate change. They're going to make climate change laws and bar and block God's people. God going to show them climate change. In one final hour, everything will be out of its course. And then where are their climate change laws now? But we don't worry because this world is not our home. We are strangers. Talking about climate change. Let me tell you something, church. <laughs> Everything in nature is going to turn out of its course. Streams are going to cease to flow. Dark, heavy clouds are going to come up and clash against each other. Let me tell you something. In the midst of the angry heaven is one clear spot. I can't wait. I don't care how bad the time of trouble going to be. God keep my heart healthy, my feet walking, my back strong, the pep in my step and the spring in my walk. Keep me, Father of Je Jehovah. Keep me, Jehovah Jireh. I want to see the wicked fall by the thousands, by my right hand and my left hand. I want to see the culmination of the hope we have held on to. I want to hear with my own ear, see with my own eye, feel with my own soul skin and my nervous system oh what a day it's gonna be when apparent loss is gonna turn to victory listen to me church the voice of God is gonna come out of the clouds oh yes sir when comes the voice of God like the sound of many waters saying according to Revelation 16 and verse 17 according to Revelation 16 and verse 17 God's voice is gonna declare it is done what's done preacher immorality it is done what's done preacher homosexuality it is done what's done preacher jlp and pnp it is done what's done preacher separation by barriers and lands and waters it is done what's done world cup it is done what's done wickedness it is done bleaching it is done injustice it is done paper money it is done digital currency it is done the beast and the mark and his name it is done 
I could go on and tell you what's done. That voice is going to shake the earth church. It's going to shake the heavens and the earth. And there is going to be a mighty earthquake that's going to blow up the Richter scale. Listen to me church. Such as was not since men were up on the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. That's Revelation 16 verses 17 and verse 18. I'm waiting for the day when apparent loss is going to turn to victory. Yes, church, the firmament is going to appear to open and to shut. You know what's the firmament of heaven? You can't imagine you seeing clouds parting and coming back together like hands are clapping for praising that God is about to have his final victory. Amen. Climate change. <laughs> oh, you ain't see climate change yet. <laughs> Listen to me, church. <laughs> the glory from the throne of God. Is going to come flashing through finally. Listen to me church. Uh, the mountains are going to shake uh, like reed in the wind. Uh, they are going to shake uh, like a man with Parkinson's. Listen to me church. Uh, and the ragged rocks are going to be scattered on every side. Uh, and there is going to be a roar as a coming tempest like a lion in the jungle. And mansions are going to mean nothing anymore. And money embezzled from the poor will mean nothing anymore. They are talking about finance. They are talking about the money sector they're talking about economy it's not going to matter anymore I want to talk about the sea going to be lashed into furies no more ships no more submarines listen to me church there is going to be heard the shriek of a hurricane like the voice of demons upon the mission of destruction what a chaos <laughs> and I want to be in the middle of it in perfect peace for those who have kept their minds, hallelujah, stayed on him. If you want a quick route of escape, some of you are saying, God, I hope I dead that time I'm sleeping in the grave. You can take that route of escape. But God, I want to meet it face on. Oh, yes, sir. I want Jesus to be in me, totally reflected through me. I want to meet it head on. I ain't taking no cowardice castle or cowardice escape route. No, Jesus. I want to meet it straight on, but... But if you choose that I should sleep in the grave, may I sleep in Jesus. Amen. Oh, what a day it's going to be. I've never heard demons speak. Have you? Have you ever seen a demon possessed person? The church. Oh, you say yes. Fine. A lot of you had demon, um, you know, situation. You, a lot of you say yes. And you should be strong then. <laughs> Uh, because I, I remember a group of men met up on some demons and they, they say we're going to cast them out. Demons say cast out. Paul we know. Jesus we know. Who are you? Wap, wap, wap. Uh, who are you? You coming to cast us out? Your life not clean. Wap, wap, wap. Who, who are you coming to cast us out? Wap, wap, wap. They beat them out of their clothes. So if you have met demons and you're here, God bless you. God bless you. You must be strong. Clean life. I heard that there was one time a young man possessed with demons and he would walk on four light dogs and bark like a real dog. These are things that will make your knees knock and your nervous system shatter if you are not connected with God. But on this day, when this day come, demons are going to be let loose. Hmm. What a day. What chaos. Oh, I want to see it, Jesus. The whole earth huh, is going to heave and swell like the waves of the sea. You, can you imagine that? Okay, you, you don't do what I do, do you? You don't read these things and pause and imagine. So the earth is a solid surface. Can you see that? But the sea is not solid. You can jump and you can dive in the water. And, and when, when the sea gets rough, it's like that. Now see the earth doing that. That's what the reading is saying. Sea goes like that, and you see, and it goes out, and see the solid surface you're on doing that. Hmm? Seeing the tectonic plates, that's what they're called. Under the surface in the earth, deep down, there are tectonic plates. They're moving like that. They're tectonic plates moving constantly, shifting. And when two tectonic plates come together and the force that's pushing and it's pushing and they, they are pushing against each other, 
This is how an earthquake comes. And they're pushing against each other. And the surface of the earth is there. And the tectonic plates, uh, they have hit together. And they're pushing and they're pushing. And the force go up and pushes up to the surface of the earth. And right there is an epicenter. And it sends out shock. And then the earth begins to dance. An earthquake. An earthquake, church. Well, the greatest earthquake is still yet to come. Hmm? And what have you made in the throne of your heart? Your little house? Huh? Huh? What are you worshiping? Your tree story? Go on. Huh? You want to see the earth dancing under that tree story? You going to know how much you're going to stand up then? Let me tell you something, church. What a day it's going to be. Uh, the very foundations will be seen to give in way. Mountain chains are going to sink. Inhabited islands disappear. By the way, we live on an island and it's inhabited. <laughs> Seaports, church. Seaports where ships are docks that have become like Sodom for wickedness are swallowed up by the angry waters. You see, when I read these things, I think in my mind and say, all right, let you be smart. God's destruction is going to hit this world and it's going to hit at different intensities because it's based on sin. That's all right. That makes sense. God is just. All right, so, so let's use numbers so your brain can follow where my brain is going. If one city has committed 10% sin and one has committed 90%, I figure God going to whop the 90% harder than he whop the 10% because God is just. So I figure, here we are, I'm going to make sure I find the city. We have 10. So when it get whopped, it's not so rough. That sounds smart. Mm, but some of us are run. I want to go to Los Angeles. Let me walk on the wall, the walk of fame. I want to go to California. Go on, full of sin. Yeah. When God starts, whoop, some of those cities go whoop, whoop. Talents about 60 pounds will be falling from the heavens. And the, I don't want to be there. I'll stay in Jamaica. Some of you say, Oh, Jamaica, back a bush. I want to go to first world country. Go. As they are developed more, as they become more advanced in technology, their record of sin increases and it's there in heaven for an account and God is going to punish accordingly. Yes. Accordingly. Yes. All in a Europe when nakedness come like clothes. Hmm. Let me tell you something, church. The seaports are going to be, let me tell you something, Babylon, Revelation chapter 18, Babylon, the great, will become up in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. God, you hear, what, you hear the text we read earlier? God's going to hide his people in the cleft of the rock, in the side on, under the wings of Jesus Christ, who is the rock of ages, and he's going to walk. The proudest cities of the earth are laid low. No, when I, I went to New York one time, I think my, my visa up this year. Well, that's it. Finished, done. November, visa done. I went to New York one time, about 2018, and, and it was in the pagan holiday time. You know, they celebrate in Tammuz. They call it Christmas. And, and, and the lady, she says, let me take you to Times Square. I said, okay, experience is, is good. And ma'am, when I was in Times Square, Lord have mercy. See a little island boy standing in Times Square. I said, what people, people are moving and the lights and everything. I said, Lord, I don't want to be at this place if a bomb drop. I want to stampede you. People want to step and crush your height. Everything going coming out. They, because so much people... Some people, they enjoy those things. Oh, the light. Oh, I want to go. I'm sorry. I, I don't forget my calling and who I am, no matter where I go and what is about to come. And when I stand in Times Square, I say, Lord, this is a handsness. You don't want to be here when destruction starts. This is the mindset we need to have. Because these are the things that's coming very, very soon. The proud cities are going to fall. 
lavish their wealth in order to glorify themselves? Did you hear what the scripture says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 13 to 18? They're going to fall. They're going to crumble to ruin before their eyes. Prison walls are going to rent asunder. And I'm glad to hear that because some of God's people were in prison now. But now God going to tear down the walls. God's people who have been held in bondage for their faith are set free. Those who have sacrificed all for Christ. What you got to sacrifice all for? Jesus. Not school, not girlfriend, not boyfriend, not for work and job. For Christ. We need to sacrifice all for Jesus Christ. Those who have sacrificed all for Christ are now secure. They are not secure by Archi. They are not secure. What the rest of them name? By Vanguard. They are not secure by, by what? Uh, whatever they want to name. Whether they have dog sign, eagle sign. They are not secured by that. They are now secured by Jesus. Some people, they live in a prison and the criminals walk free. Everywhere they walk in the house, they got to go tap, 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 go through, go through, tap, tap, tap. They are in a prison house. And you know what is sad? With all of those security, the, the criminal, whenever he decides to come and see it and possess him, he just walk free. And just find a little hole and come all through your tap, 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 tap. And take what he take in, what he owns and he gone. If God allows him to spear your life. People live in prison and the criminals walk free. But now God's people will be secured in him. Hidden as in the secret of the Lord's pavilion. Didn't you hear we read in Psalms? They have been tested. And before the world and the despisers of truth. They have, uh, they have evidenced and, and shown their fidelity to him who died for them. I believe in Jesus because I have experienced Jesus. I'm not in church for church activity. I'm not standing here for your applaud. I'm standing here because of Jesus. I'm preaching as I am because I believe. I'm preaching as I am because I know. I'm preaching as I am because I've seen, I've heard, and I will not build my faith on just evidences, but I have testified, I have seen, I have felt, I have seen the changes, what God has done in my life, and I have seen through prophecy and through the halls of faith uh, that as God said it, it's going to happen. This world is crumbling down before the mighty hand of God and God is coming back for me. Amen. Can't say for us. I know what plans you have. But he's coming back for me. Listen to me church. God is going to test all of us severely and extensively. Why? Because sin started in heaven. And it will never happen again. When God tests us to our extreme limit and we don't break, then we are ready. We have not been tested yet. All the little things where we are flip over and fall over, it showed that we're not there yet. But we can't be there forever because God is coming and time is running out. Revelation 22, probation will close at a certain time. Some of us have been in church for 20 years and still falling over the same sin. Yeah. We have to get it together because the war is about to begin. And, 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 and I put a statement there, where are you then? Then where? When a sudden change comes. Where are you then? When apparent loss turns to victory. Which side are you on? There are some people, them in a church, them know with Satan, them know with God, not no name so. By not choosing, you have made a choice. We are in war. And you have to choose. You are forced to choose by the circumstances and the situation and the times in which we are living. 
And everything you do shows your choice. The hairstyle you have shows your choice. The trim that you got shows your choice. Simple things I just mentioned, right? But every decision, clothes you wear, shows your choice. The company you keep shows your choice. The food you eat shows your choice. And, and let's add this. The place you live is showing. Notice I put the word showing, present continuous, because some of us are still transitioning. But it's going to show your choice. Oh, yeah. We are choosing every day which side we are going to stand on. Every single waking moment. It is so sad how Satan has distracted young people. Young people, there's so much power inside of us. So much that God can do within us and through us. Satan has baited this world for the young. For the young. Because we have strength. When, by the time we're catching 40, you know. Come quick, Jesus. By the time we're catching 40... By the time we're getting 40 and 50 and going up there, we are going down the hill. Because we are in the last days and the very air that we are breathing in is tainted. You know it's God that keeps us alive? The very air we So you there walking, I'm a vegetarian, I eat this and eh? The very thing you're eating, very lettuce leaf you're taking in, has, 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 has very small portions of chemicals. It is God. That keeps us alive. And we are in the last generation. And by the time we reach 40 and 50, cancer eating us up. And so Satan knows. And so what he wants to do is to keep us distracted in the world for the best of our 30, 40 years. And they come to Jesus, mash up like Kalalu. And then you sit down after his graces touch your heart. And you shake your head and wish. You could go back how much you would have done for Jesus. But now you're walking and giving out track and your hip going out. You say, Lord, I got to rest. And you don't have the strength anymore. And that's why Satan bades this world to distract young people. Because the work will be finished with young people. And because it started with young people. But you got to get your head straight. Yes. It's either you want Jesus or you want the world. But you cannot have it Get your head straight. Get it together. We are nearing the end. I want to tell you as we're getting to the end that a marvelous change is coming. Over those who have held fast their integrity in the very face of death. Oh yes, church. Listen, they have been suddenly delivered from the dark and terrible tyranny of men transformed to demons. You hear what's going to happen at that time? Men are going to be transformed to demons. Every single person that kills themselves were fully possessed with demons before committing the act. Suicide is demon possession. A lot of murders being committed are demon possession. Are you there with me, church? Men are going to be transformed into demons. There are some men, you go downtown, you walk in the crowd, you see some people, you can see demon in them. It's the mercy of God holding them. Do you hear what I say? Church, men are going to be transformed in demons. Some of your family members. And men here is not just gender male, but, but it's generic Male, female, human beings are going to be transformed into demons. Some will be your sons and daughters. And that's why when you have the little children, don't play around. Don't play around. Get them in line. Because you're either going to let them be possessed by demons. And that's going to be your demon coming after you. Or they'll be possessed by the Spirit of God. Some of you, you failed because you didn't know. And now you're only left to rub out your knees in prayer. Because those demons coming for you. Oh yeah. Satan, when they possess your children, they're coming for you in the time of trouble. They, they find you. So you better be wise. 
and know what you will keep from them. Ah, uh -huh. where, 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 where you are, mommy, in Jamaica? Where you are? I'm in country living. Where? Somewhere. <laughs> you have to be wise. You think I'm joking? You better be wise. Wise. It's not being cynical or, or extreme. It's being wise. You have, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you some quote. We're going to the screen soon. You got to be wise. God gave us the formula in the book of John. He says, my family are those that do the will of God. What more do you want than that? Who was at the door? You see the same woman who's at the door, Mary, knocking down the door with Jesus' brothers? Huh? You see the same woman who's at the door? is the same one that was close to Jesus' heart that he loved. Mary, who bore the holy seed divine. It's the same woman that before he died, he made sure she was secured on the cross. When he said to John, behold, your mother, behold your son, take care of her. And the Bible says from that day, Mary was at John's house and he took care of her. But, but it was the same woman at that time who was led on by the spirits of Jesus' brother to discredit Jesus at the time. And desire of ages said he knew why they had come and that's why I said who are my family and at that moment he disowned Mary for she allowed a certain spirit to be ruling her at that time he says who are my mother and brother those that do the will of God it's the same principle we ought to adopt Amen. a marvelous change has come church all I've preached to you today are yet to come they have been suddenly delivered from the dark and terrible tyranny of man transformed to demon. Their faces, so lately pale and anxious and haggard, are now aglow with wonder, faith, and love. Their voices rise in a triumphant song. They cry out, God is our refuge. Remember what we read, Psalms 46, verses 1 to 3? God is our refuge and strength, a very <laughs> present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we, church, fear, though the earth be removed, oh yes, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled uh, uh, through the mountains, uh, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, we will not fear. That's why you have to know God now. See the troubles that have begun, the little troubles that have started, the financial depression that has begun. You have to know God now. Trust him now. It is impossible. I only tried today as God gave me inspiration. But it is impossible to describe the horror and the despair of those who have trampled upon God's holy requirement. The Lord gave them his law. Let me tell you something. We must be firm to God's law. You got children and they're getting married. Mm? The very fact they put that marriage on a Sabbath, they didn't invite you. I said they didn't invite you. I don't care if your mother or father, they didn't invite you. Then come say, send invitation when you look sa Saturday. And then you will, God will, under God will understand what? Stand up for the commandment of God. Don't you hear? Not even the animals. No stranger. But God will understand. And that has a problem. You will tell them everything. Say, me that Jamaica and a country living. Me that east, northwest. Me that this location. Yes, sir. And when demon take them over, they just take a plane and say, I know one day. I know where one is. Sell out mother and father. Stand up. Fire children, and you say, No, no, children, you don't know all your heart string tied to them. Eh? God caught that. Caught that. I'm your parent. Seven day Adventure, you're going to invite me to your wedding. And you're going to put it on Sabbath. You're, you'd never invite me. And worse, they're even bad talk about dead. Don't even bother talk about the dead. The dead don't know if you come, the dead don't know if you left. Pan with Sabbath. You must be mad. Let the dead bury the dead. Listen to me. Listen to me. There are people who don't want to understand your faith and your conviction, and that's okay. But you don't have a burden to explain it to them either if they have turned down their ear. They just know I'm a child of the king. And whatever you're doing, you want me there, you got to set that to fit me in. Are not coming. Simple. 
If in those little cases you can't stand up for the commandment of God, then when man will come, let's say you're going to stand up. For what? For what? When you couldn't tell your little son, say, me now nah come because you're married for Sabbath, you're little heart. And when they put cut last your throat and say, What you say? Sabbath or Sunday? And you go, you, Oh, you? Oh, no. Oh, no. You start urinating by yourself and say, God will understand. No, no, no. You, you, you start up. I'm telling you practical things. If you can't stand up in a little test like that, you're going to stand when the knife is at your throat? It don't work like that. It doesn't work. Like that. Church, those who honored God's commandment, are you there with me? Yes. By keeping his Sabbath, God is going to honor them. Yes. The Lord gave them his law. They might have compared their characters with it and learned their defects while there was yet opportunity for repentance and reform. But in order to secure the favor, to secure the favor of who? The world. In order to secure the favor of the world. You know that's what happened to young people? Let me tell you what happened to young people. You grow them up in the Seventh-day Adventist church, and when they are little children, it's fine. But it's when they start the high school. It's when they start the high school. Because you never send them a Christian education. You throw them in a Babylon. Just like man, I say, you send them my fire. So when them start, go down, start, make friends up. And the friends say, come on, come on, look at the fit, no, come on, look at the party. Yeah, I said, no, man, me a Christian. God will understand. And they start, go under pressure. And I'm saying, and I'm not bragging and putting myself up there, but from long time, it's still different. I don't care. I say, I don't come here. I say, go on, go do my gun, and I'm fine. Me no come under them, the pressure, them. I don't care. For lose friends, but there are many young people. They have to please the crowd. Are you there with me? Probably God saw that in me a long time and said, Yes, I make this a boy I preach the gospel because I will find him in my gate. And because I'm the love Fred and crowd and them things, he we can go through because he might lose enough. God saw characters in us and he picks us for the work. Are you there with me? Based on the characters that we have. But that's what happens to young people. And that's why, be honest with yourself, we lose many of them after their high school years and their university years. It's the pressure when you send them into Babylon. It's the pressure to be a part of the crowd. When I went to UA, every day a party. I go, you go study medicine. He come like Satan, sit down at the gate and say, come into hell. Come, come. Uh, every day a party. And I see young people lose themselves. Every day a party. Me say, all Thursday. Turn it up Thursday, I tell you. Every day a party, party. And they just partying out. And when they stress with the schoolwork, they just party and have sex with each other and go from one and they just party. You eh? It's the gate of hell when you enter through into. But me, I'm glad I'm glad I say med school is stressful. Cause when you stress, lick the head, just walk on my head, go sleep. <laughs> go on home. Are you there with me? The most I did was school and gym and yard. And you see the young ladies, and you know what is sad? You know what is sad? These young ladies, they're the ones coming out as professional. Then you see them nice bankers and so on. You say, oh man, I want to marry her. Oh, you would know the sad tale. You know what these sick boys do at the University of the West Indies? They compete with each other. Let me tell you, young ladies, they compete with each other. They have a list on a certain dorm. And, and, and when the semester done, he has had sex with 60 girls. And he beats him because he's 70. Not 70 times, you know, 70 different females. They're competing. Sick. Fall into the pressure of the world. To favor the world. They set aside its precepts, church. And, and sought others to transgress. They have endeavored to compel God's people to profane his Sabbath. Now they are condemned by that law which they have despised. With awful distinctness, they see that they are without excuse. But it's too late. 
They chose whom they would serve and worship. Bible says in Malachi 3 verse 18 that we read earlier. Malachi 3 verse 18. Then shall ye return. Remember? And discern between the what? The righteous and the, the wicked. Between him that what? Serve it God and him that what? Serve it him not. The voice of God coming down to the end is heard from heaven. I love this quote. I had to put this here because it is something I want to experience. Bible says in Matthew 24, no man knoweth the day, nor the hour of his coming. Jesus said, only my father in heaven. Well, God going to tell us. Those who come to that troublesome time, God is going to consider them so close. When God looked and saw that they endured all the hatred that the world has against them and they didn't buckle. God goes straight in his clothes. <laughs> God going to say, these are mine. He, he, he going to look at his son and say, son, you did well. Because you said that prayer, son. You said that prayer in John 17. You said, father, you can't accept me if you don't take them. And that prayer, for our son, it covered everyone that should honor my name. From then to now. And look at my jewels. God going to say yes. And he going to finally tell them. He going to tell them what no man know. He going to tell them what not even Jesus know. It says here, the voice of God is heard from heaven declaring the day and the hour of Jesus coming and delivering the everlasting covenant to his people. You know why God done it? You know why he finally did this? Because they have been through hell and high water. You know why he finally did it? Because they are worn and tackered and pale faces. They have held out and so God says, I'm going to give this one to them. I'm going to tell them so they can hold on to the end because what an encouragement. And, and when God speaks at this time, you know, the world is going to hear thunder. Go back to the gospel. Go up when Moses spoke to God. You remember? When the people said, we want to talk to God ourselves. You think you're more special, Moses? And God said, come out of the way, Moses. Let me talk to them. And when God started talking, them said, Lord, Moses, go talk back to God. The breeze, the thunder, Moses, go talk back to God. Yes, yes. And then up in the Mount of Transfiguration, same thing. Those who are connected to God will hear his voice while the world will hear thunder. oh gosh i want to live i want to live to see it when i hear his voice telling my ears jesus is coming june well i told you already jesus is going to come in the fall based on the study we did so jesus is coming i'm just saying something september the 11th september the whatever in that time that period on the calendar Jesus will come. But he's going to tell us the very day and hour. I'll go through prison to hear that. Oh, I'll go through time of trouble to hear that. I'll lose every crumbs of bread just to hear that. What a day that's going to be. Like peals of loudest thunder, his words roll through the earth. The Israel of God stand listening with their eyes fixed upward. Oh yes. Their countenances are lighted up with the glory and shine as did the face of Moses. Ooh. Light coming off the molecules of your skin. When he come down from Sinai, the wicked cannot look upon them. Oh yes. Oh yes, can I look upon them? And when the blessing is pronounced on those who have honored God by keeping the Sabbath holy, there is a mighty shout of victory. Hallelujah! That voice which penetrates the ear of the dead. They know how often have its plaintive tender tones called them to repentance. How often has it been heard in the touching entreaties of a friend, a brother, a redeemer to the rejectors of his grace and his mercy. No other could be so full of condemnation, so burdened with denunciation as that voice, the voice of God, which has so long pleaded. Turn! As I'm pleading this morning, turn from your evil ways, from the ways that will cause destruction. Why will you die? Ezekiel 33 verse 11, turn. Oh, that it were to them the voice of a stranger. I read for you as I close, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 24. 
25. I have called. And he refused. I have stretched out. Can you imagine you stretch out your hand? Imagine you stretch out your hand to shake somebody and they just look at you like that. What shame would you feel? Can you imagine you stretch out your hand and they just go so and turn? What embarrassment do you feel? That's how God feels. Listen to Proverbs 1. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. God says, I'm going to laugh. You continue to read the verses below. I'm going to laugh at your calamity. The voice that awakens, which they would faint blot out, warnings despise, invitations refuse, privileges slighted. It's now too late. They have come to wipe out God's people by the laws of the land at that time to come. But when they rush upon God's people all across the world, a sudden change is going to come. Because finally, God will not be silent anymore. Yeah. And what seems to be loss on our side yeah. is going to be victory. And this victory is going to be a lasting victory. An eternal victory. For we will never die again. We will never cry no more. Revelation chapter 21. Oh church, what a day it's going to be. But on that day, where will you be then? Where will you be then? That's what you need to answer today. Don't answer me. I'm not your priest. Jesus is, in, is your priest. Where are you then? All right, let's get to the slide as we try to close up. Empty pockets, closed mouths. What are we talking about? Empty pockets, Red Cross fears, enormous suffering in 2023. What's happening here? It says the head of the International Committee of the Red Cross warned Wednesday. This was the 14th of December. He warned at that time, or she warned at that time, an enormous level of suffering awaits the world in 2023. That's what I have for you on the first Sabbath of 2023. An enormous suffering awaits the world in 2023 with famine spreading. We expect an enormous level of suffering. There is a possibility that we will see very high levels of hunger in many parts of the world and insecurity in general. Not only will prices be high for food, you, you go to the supermarket, let's talk about Jamaica, go to the supermarket recently. You go to the supermarket and just to get enough things for your house, you're looking at $20,000, $30,000, I'm telling you, easy, easy. Right? So it's going to be difficult. Not only will prices be high for food, it will simply not be available. Now that's dangerous. When it's high and you're trying to get it, it's one thing. But when it's not there to get, it's, it's not going to be available in the same amount due to the lack of what? Fertilizers. And what is that connected to? I showed you more and more. They say climate change, less fertilizer, less nitrogen because we don't want the atmosphere. So you see they have a plan. They're cutting down the fertilizer and because of that shortage of food. And again, the impact of what? Climate change. And don't try to sit there and say, well, I just need to make it through 2023. Well, <laughs> what do you think 2024 going to bring? Every year from now, counting is to the coming of Christ. Listen to me, church. For the master of the universe. That speech sounds like some Freemasonry thing. <laughs> some large thing. For the master of the universe. It's going to be a difficult year. See that? Wall Street bonuses expected to plunge. What's that? 45%. You know why I bring these things to God's people? To make Uno not be fool fool. Know what to invest, what to do with your money, when to do it, and now. Time is wrapping up. It's, it's, not, it's not 1995. It's 2023. Jesus wants to come. Listen to me, church. Let's talk about this now. FDIC. Who is this? Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC. 
This is in America, huh? is an independent agency created by con Congress to maintain stability and public confidence in the what? Nation's financial system. It says here, to accomplish this mission, the FDIC ensures deposits, huh. examines and supervises financial institution for safety, soundness, and consumer protection. Sounds good. Mm, sounds good. Makes large and complex financial institution resolvable and manages receivership. So let's hear what the FDIC wants to tell us what to do with our money. Well, let me tell you what they had. They had a meeting. See the, see the big people here? They had a meeting that was leaked. Listen, the meeting was leaked. All right, you can go on the website. The big people they met, they don't want the public to see this video. The bankers don't trust the banks. Who don't trust what? Bankers don't trust the bank. But well, they're not telling you that. Listen now, they are talking about financial crisis and their lack of faith in our banking system and how to keep the public from freaking out. Empty pockets. They already know that it has begun. But they want to keep the public out of it. You don't want a huge run on the institution and they are going to be. Another major clip from the FDIC meeting showing this is going down soon. They're expecting it from November 2022 meeting, right? So we have heard, here's what I have to tell you today. We have heard more than one time that that year a recession going to come and that year pass. And then another year a recession going to come. And now in year 2023 is going to be bad. And you sit down there and you say, Cho, I keep hearing this and it's not coming. Oh, why don't you be wise? Why don't you be wise? It is God holding it for you to get ready. And if every year you keep hearing it's going to happen, it means it will happen. When it doesn't, it's the mercy of God holding you a little. Because some of you know they know where you're not putting nothing in the ground, you know, moving to country living. God will hold it. But we, ministries like these, come to give you the early sign. So you can start prepare. What's the statement? If you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. All right, let's 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 go. We're living in un so let's start this back. Let's this this is a lady for the FDIC, and let her tell you what to do with your money. Let's go. We're living in unprecedented time. At a time of a pandemic like this, it is way too easy to get confused and to have fear about what you should be doing with your money in your accounts, especially as you're looking at the volatility in the stock market and the financial sector. This is what I would like you to take away from this. Your money is safe at the banks. The last thing you should be doing is pulling your money out of the banks now, thinking that it's going to be safer someplace else. You don't want to be walking around with large wads of cash, and you certainly don't want to be hoarding cash in your mattress. It didn't pan out well for so many people. And I will tell you this, no depositor has lost a penny of their insured deposits since 1933 when the FDIC was created. So if you're talking about having your money in a safe place, please keep it in an FDIC insured bank. Keep your money in the bank, Sturge. It's safe. Since, since 1933? Oh, interesting. So you're telling me in 2008, when there was a recession, no one lost? That's a lie. People lost their money. So who's she fooling? Don't take it out and don't put it in your mattress. <laughs> Be wise, church. You decide what you're going to do. What's happening now? Nigeria caps ATM cash. Let me tell you what they do. They're pushing you to, to digital cash, you know. Watch. Nigeria caps ATM cash withdrawals at $45 daily to push digital payments. Nigeria Central Bank slashed the daily withdrawal limit from automatic teller machines in a bid to boost digital payments in Africa's most populous nation. The Central Bank of Nigeria capped the maximum customer withdrawal at 20,000 Naira, $44.97, $45 a day, from 
down from the previous limit of 150,000. Look, look at that. Do you see the drop? Watch, watch. The, the thousand is Naira, right? And this dollar is US, right? But watch, watch. From 150,000, they took off 130. What a drop. According to a circular sent to lenders on Tuesday, weekly cash withdrawal from banks are restricted to 100,000 Naira for individuals and 500,000 Naira for corporations and any amount above that limit will attract a fee of 5% and 10% respectively, the central bank said. Problem solution. Create the problem, give you the solution. Central digital currency. That's what's coming. It's coming. You know. These things that we keep preaching to you, it's a must. It's just a matter of when. But you don't need to sit down and wonder when. Just prepare. It says, experts raise concern as Nigeria limits cash withdrawal. All right? So let's move on. Same news. FDIC saying, I don't think it's hard to get a lot of um, demand for transparency right now. In this sort of period of peacetime. But that is going to flip. And it's going, it's going to be faster than we saw in what? 2008. Saying it plain and simple. This is way worse than 2008. I say you can go on the website, you know, and try and find the videos. You see them here? This is just a picture of it. See them sitting around their table, meeting the big heads. All right? Again, the Lord set me for me in a night vision, night season, December 24th. This is 1888 messages. The perils coming up on the people of God. How busy, how persevering, how active are the powers of darkness. The mystery of iniquity, the powers from beneath are stirred to bring about the crisis in compelling the churches to show honor to the spiritual Sabbath. The issue is coming. Secret meetings. What? Secret meetings are held. Secret councils convene. Plans and devices are framed to be executed. Blue words. Men who have not had a vital connection with God see no real necessity of the book Great Controversy coming to the people. Because they have eyes but see not. This book should be circulated all through this city. What book? Great Controversy. All right. There's your evangelism project for 2023. The Lord. Let's read this. The Lord presented the matter before me that we must make haste. Let the light come to the people in warnings right here. But those who were seeing only gain, who saw no necessity of urging and making special effort to get this word from the Lord before the people were neglecting their God-given duty. I felt intensely, but what could I do? Strong-minded, stubborn men, unworked by the Spirit of God, priding themselves in their wisdom, would follow a course of their own devising. Let the result be as it would. The men will have to answer in the day of God for their neglect of this place. Light must shine forth. So obviously you're seeing Ellen White writing an experience in her day, the problem she was having with the church leaders. That's what she's talking about. The men priding themselves, strong-minded, stubborn. She said they will have to answer in the day of God. Fundamentals of Christian education. Listen. Listen to this. Watch this. Watch this. The land boom has cursed this country. Listen to this. Extravagant prices have been paid for lands bought on credit. Don't put yourself in debt, you know. They're always late. Then the land must be cleared. This is what happened to some people. And more money is hired. A house to be built calls for more money. And then interest with open mouth swallows up all the profits. Debts accumulate. And then come the closing and failure of banks. Banks will fail. And then the foreclosure of mortgages. Thousands have been turned out of employment. Families lose their little all. They borrow and borrow and then have to give up their property and come out penniless. Much money and hard labor have been put into farms, bought on credit or inherited with an encumbrance. The occupants lived in hope of becoming real owners and it might have been so, but for the failure of banks throughout the country. What did the lady say? Your money is secured 
in the banks. The past says otherwise. I want to tell you what God can do for you. I read this to you before, some weeks back, September, I think. I'm going to read it again. This is what God can do for his people. There was a noted spiritualist in Battle Creek at that time who used to tell Brother White how the spirits guided him in all his business affairs. All right? The citizens were building a schoolhouse in the city of Battle Creek, three school buildings on Case Street, and this man was the one that had charge of the money, and he too had 2,600 in those banks. Imagine 1897. Is that a lot of money? Oh yes, oh yes. Brother White went on a trip east and after his return, he met the spiritualist who said, Mr. White, that's Ellen White's husband, Mr. White, the banks have failed. What the lady says, your money is safe in the banks. Not according to the past. Elder White said, did you have your money deposited in them? Yes, said he. I had the money there and I have lost the whole of it. Did you lose anything? Not a cent. The God that I serve gave me a dream and I drew the money out. That's what God can do. You say to me, Pastor, what should I do with my money? Don't ask me. I don't know. Go to God. What you must do? Go to God. What did Pastor Lecky say at FTB about your money? Did he say carry it to him? No, no. Go to God. All right. One third. This is the IMF. One third of world economy expected to be in recession in 2023, says IMF chief. One third, which means it's, it's about to start. All right? The, this year is going to be tougher, empty pockets, church, on the global economy than the one we have left behind. The International Monetary Fund chief, Kristalina Georgieva, has warned. Why? Because the three big economies, what are they? U.S., European Union, China are all slowing down simultaneously. She said in an interview that aired on CBS Sunday, and I quote, we expect one third of the world economy to be in recession. She said, adding that even for countries that are not in recession, it would feel like recession for hundreds of millions of people. Half of the European Union will be in recession. Be wise, get ready for the rich Session. You see the word? <laughs> Rich session. Mm -hmm. Listen, big banks predict recession. Fed pivot in 2023. Listen to me, church. Listen, let's read here. Testimonies, volume 9. The tongue of the minister is not to be employed in telling men the best way to bury their means in the earth. The tongue of ministers are not to be employed in telling men the best way to bury their means in the earth. That's not our focus. We shouldn't do that. He should tell them how to invest safely in the bank of what? Amen. So I ain't coming here telling you about no stocks and bonds. What kind of minister is that? He should tell you how to invest in heaven. The cause of God is a sure bank that can never fail. And the investment of our time, our interest, and our means in it is a treasure in the heavens that fail it not. Let none withhold their mites, and let those who have much rejoice that they can lay up in heaven a treasure that fail it not. The money that we refuse to invest in the work of the Lord will perish. The recession is coming to swallow it up. It's going to perish on it, no interest will accumulate in the bank of heaven. Where are you going to invest it? I'm telling you with the word. Let's read this. Watch this. Watch this quote. T TDG, um, this day with God. Watch this. There is hurry and excitement. Everything is written, you know. Men feverishly invest their capital of money in bonds and stocks. Not for God people in that. In bonds and stock. Watch. They become wealthy in a day. Oh yes. And yet are unsatisfied. One more. One more. They continue to invest with insane expectancy. The bank stock goes down. 
The millionaire in the morning is a beggar at night. And the way they think best to end the matter is with a pistol, rope, or the waters of the bay. They shoot themselves, they hang themselves, or go throw themselves off the draw. Hmm? Many killed themselves in 2008. Money is a blessing. When those who use it consider that they are the Lord's stewards, that they are handling the Lord's capital and must one day give account of their stewardship. It is the love of money which the Bible condemns as the root of all evil. Such love that when a man loses money, the precious life God has given him is made of no account because money is gone. Everything is written in the spirit of prophecy in the Bible. Empty pockets. What are you going to do with your means? Time's running out. Remember that he will one day say, give an account of thy stewardship. Let us invest our means in the bank of heaven by using it to supply the wants of the needy or to advance the cause of God. Yeah. Those things ought to be your focus today. Then the master at his coming having found us faithful over a few things, will make us each ruler over what? Many things in the kingdom of glory. Some selfishly retain their means during their lifetime, trusting to make up for their neglect by remembering the cause in their wills. Huh? But not half of the means thus bestowed in legacies ever benefits the object specified. Brethren and sisters, invest in the bank of heaven yourselves and do not leave your stewardship upon another. Do just as Christ has directed you and you are in a safe path. They have millions and they're dying and they will it. Go to this and that and they're dead and it never does. That's what the reading is saying. While you are alive and invest in God's cause. I'm giving you the instruction of what you're going to do. Those who think to ease their consciences by willing their property to their children, parents, uh -huh, or by withholding from God's cause and suffering it to pass into the hands of unbelieving, reckless children for them to squander or hoard up and worship will have to render an account to God. They are unfaithful stewards of their Lord's money. You're dying and you will it to your children. They are ungodly. Will to what? And leave them nothing. They are ungodly children. Put it to the cause of God. You are stewards. Are you there with me? God is going to write it in the account against you. It says here, wealthy men will be tested more closely than they have ever yet been tested. And when I read them something, I say, God, just give me a little for survive. Don't make me wealthy. Because he that have much... Oh, you expected much. It says wealthy men will be tested more closely than they have ever yet been tested. If they endure the test, overcoming the blemishes of their characters, and as faithful stewards obey the injunctions of Christ to render to the Lord his own, then they show that they have a sense of the high call claims of God upon them. But if they fail to do this and invest the, the heaven lent treasures in earthly things, they are robbing God. Robbing God. I think these things are clear. Empty pockets. Now, closed mouths. What's that? COVID misinformation spikes in wake of Damar Hamlin's on-field collapse. You, you following this news? Yeah. This footballer who collapsed. He, he, he's recovering, they say. But it's all tied to C19. He was a strong supporter for the jab. All right? Well, they say it's based on the fact that he got a hit in the chest and it caused a heart attack. That's possible. But what they're trying to do through C19 is saying that anybody who speaks contrary to what the mainstream is saying is misinformation, which is not necessarily so. And so they're on a drive. Health, sex, and conspiracy theories in France. How COVID led to a misinformation surge. What is misinformation? As C19 continues to spread, so does misinformation about it. But what they really want to do is close your mouth. What we say, you say yay. Let me show you. World Economic Forum. Annual meeting. This was when the picture was taken. It's, no, it's counting down, right? But this was when the picture was taken. Look, it starts when? The 16th, and today is the what? The 7th. So how many days now? Nine days to go. Right? But what are they going to meet about? Cooperation in a fragmented world. 
Let me tell you what their drive is about. Huh? Um, countering threats in the age of black swans. All right? As black swan events proliferate, threats that were once considered outliers are becoming commonplace. Why are they meeting in January? This is compounded by a wide range of actors with access to sophisticated technology and weaponry, as well as an ever-increasing capacity to spread misinformation. So why are they meeting in January, the WEF? They are meeting to put their plans to execute, to find ways to shut you up. Even, even, even things like this that's going to go on YouTube, and, and the preaching that's going to seem contrary to, they want to shut those things down. So they're emptying your pockets and closing your mouth. L listen, listen. How can we begin to predict the unpredictable in mitigating and countering security threats from black swan events? You can type in what black swan really means on the on internet. They'll tell you. World Economic Forum's 2023 meeting will focus on countering what? Misinformation. That's why I'm telling you, this, this international church on YouTube, it has, a, it has a timer on it. Soon, soon it will be over. And this will only be local. Because they're going to close down. Safe to serve all won't be able to go on. They're going to close them down. That's what they're doing with these things. The description for the panel doesn't define misinformation. But claims that a wide range of actors have access to an ever-increasing capacity to spread misinformation. But what's misinformation? This capacity, according to WEF, is supposedly compounding threats that were once considered outliers. In its post, the WEF complained that it has been targeted by disinformation campaigns. So it's like how when we preach and we say, look what the WEF doing and so, and they're saying we're making it look evil and make them look bad. But it's because they're being exposed. They want to close it down. And links to another post where its managing director, Adrian Monk, suggested that criticism of the WEF's controversial, you'll owe nothing. You remember that? Yeah. You'll owe nothing and you'll be happy slogan is tied to misinformation campaign. Monk has lamented misinformation concerning C19 and vaccine. You see what's happening? They're trying to close out people like us, who is trying to get the people to be aware. So they want a world where when they speak, the whole crowd say, yeah. So they're pushing misinformation, using the word, just like how words like fake news. Remember how popular that become? Fake news. So you want to dis discredit something, you can say fake news. But is it fake news? Is it misinformation? All right? WEF and the global leaders that attend its meetings have previously outlined how big tech partners with intergovernmental organizations like the United Nations to tackle disinformation demanded that social media companies crack down on rumors and push for the use of artificial intelligence to censor misinformation. We're living in a world where robotics are going to join with human beings. I saw a video. I should have brought it here. When you saw the video, when it starts, you see a human being. You think. Like a real person until they take off the head and you see all the mechanics in it. Let me tell you something. We reach a stage in Earth's history. People are going to pass you by. They're not people. They're robots talking to you and interacting with you. That's where we are. Church, World Economic Forum calls for merging of human and AI intel. The censor, see that? What's that? Hate speech and misinformation. But who is defining hate speech? Who is defining it? And who is defining misinformation? Empty pockets and closed mouth. I'm closing. I'm closing, church. My last slide. Don't forget this quote. GC 580. Don't forget it. Marvelous in our what? Shrewdness. And cunning is the Roman church. Listen what she knows to do. She can read what is to be. Right? She bides her time. That's what she's doing right now. Those who reject the light of truth will yet seek the aid of this self-styled infallible power to exalt an institution that originated with her. How readily she will come to the help of Protestants in this work. It is not difficult to conjecture. 
Who understands better than the paper leaders how to deal with those who are disobedient to the church? Who understands better? What did they do in their days? They boiled, they flayed, they strangled, they burned. Who understands better how to deal with those who are disobedient to the church? The next question would be, who is the church? So when you see these things, you must question, what is misinformation? What is hate speech? Who is defining what? That's the critical point. They want to empty your pocket and close your mouth. So you now need to control your food. Because food is going to be the game changer. If you take your food that you eat from me, and all I have to do is control the food, and I control you. And the message to escape that is country living. The key, don't go, hey, don't go country and build up house and put up your foot, you know. Hey, you go country, build house in country, huh? and then you driving in city and buying food from supermarket, you miss the message. You're supposed to be there and reach the place where you're picking off your field. Um, and when you're done cook, everything when I put where you eat, come off the field. Are you there with me? And I know some of you will carry your goats to the country and your chicken to still have your, your flesh in the country. But try and avoid that. Don't do that. Because how are you going to feed them? God is pulling us away from that. All of this is a part of the message. Amen? So you should be able to cut your callaloo, mm -hmm. a cabbage, are you there with me? Corn. So what do you do when, you, when, you, when you're farming? You, you got you to gotta organize your field. So you have the general area where you plant your yam, your banana, your cassava, and, and, and your catch crop, your pumpkin, three months, your watermelon, your catch crop, your pepper, your season. And then you have a little space where that's your medicine. You plant those medicinal things that you're going to use. Medicine, and then vegetables, food, fruits. Yeah, and you go through. And when you finish, you should cook a full pot. And everything, when you reach, when you smile and you, you, feel, you feel proud, when you, when you serve the meal and you say, everything come off the field. That's when you're there. Are you there? That's when you're there. That's what you should be aiming towards. It's better you can fool your stomach. And you don't have a bed to sleep on, you're okay. <laughs> Tie something between two, three. I'm only being extreme for, uh, to send a message. You must have food. Do you get it? Yes. You must have food. Right now, I'm setting my mind to start planting before the house starts going up. So by the time the house is ready, <laughs> sound wise? Yes. Because guess what? Guess what? To how things are going? Before the house is ready, food might cut off. Yes. See what I'm saying? Yes. Let's move forward with wisdom, church. But I'm happy to tell you that Jesus is coming again. Amen. And I'm happy to tell you that it's not long from now. And I'm happy to tell you that you still have time to get ready. But I also want to tell you, you don't have forever. And so we must ask the question, if you're ready, for Jesus to come. Are you ready today? Will you be ready tomorrow? And if you're ready today, stay ready. If you're not ready, get ready. Anything that will affect your readiness, any place, anyone, move away from it. Are you ready to stand in, to stand your, in your place? place? The song says, church. Are you ready to look in his face? Are you ready to look in his face? The face of Jesus. Can you look up and say? Can you look up and say? This is, this is my Lord. My Lord. Are you ready for Jesus to come? First Sabbath of 2023, I want to pray for you and with you.
Those who are so moved, come forward. Come forward as we prepare for the time ahead of us. It's going to be rough. It's going to be tough. But Jesus is able. Jesus is able, church. And let's get ready to pray. Let us pray. Loving Jesus. Compassionate Savior. Song says, are we ready for Jesus to come? Have we fought a good fight? Have we finished the course? Can others see Jesus in us? It's a potent question. And the right question to start 2023. Are we ready for Jesus to come? Lord, faithfully I've come every Sabbath 2023, 2022. And I've begun 2023. My purpose is to warn. My purpose is to inform. But God, I cannot prepare your people, but you can prepare them. Lord, I pray that they will listen. They will see the urgency. I'm trying to keep them awake, to keep them in an urgent state so they can be ready. Not to be foolish virgins, but to be wise. So we can be ready, so we can stay ready. Father, this thing is real. This is the real drama. Oh, Father, can we learn these things, hear these things, come church, say amen to these sermons, and be lost in the end, fall short in the end? We didn't listen in the end. Oh God, let it not be us. Get us ready, oh Father. By whatever means, whatever you have to destroy, whatever you have to remove to bring us down, do it now, Jesus, because time is running out. Get us ready. Keep us ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.